Good day, lovely viewers. My name is Della Boatin, and I welcome you to today's edition of Life Moments on UB Clifton's. Before anything, do not forget to subscribe to our channel, and you can also like our videos and as well as share them on all social media platforms. How would you feel if you rise and fall? How would you feel if for some reason you used to walk but you cannot walk again? Ladies and gentlemen, our guest for today is somebody who has been through similar, or if I would say the same situation. Um, he's been like that, he couldn't walk, he couldn't bend his leg for about 20 years, but he still perseveres. He used to be the head of the pharmacy department at the Ifia in Kwanta Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kwame Dumfe. Daddy, you are welcome. Very, very good. Okay. Um, First of all, I would like you to give us a brief history of your background, um, your growing up, where you went to school, stuff like that. Okay, I, I was born at Intonso. Okay. My parents were teachers. Okay. So when my daddy was transferred from Intonso to Kwadaso, uh, we had to join him. So we moved to Kwadaso. Oh, it okay. was there that I started school at uh, so SDA Primary School. Okay, okay. What's in Tonso? It's in Tonso in the Shansi region? Yes. In the Shansi region, all right. Okay, okay. So I started school at so SDA Primary. All right. From there to class seven, when I wrote a common entrance and went to the Kwai SDA. Okay. For my secondary education. Okay, all right. From the choir, I went to Tema Secondary School for my sixth form education. Okay. Which program did you read there? I was a science student. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. from there, I went to Nigeria. All right. Adventist Seminary of West Africa. That was a school there. Then I came back, wrote my year levels, and then went to UST. Oh, okay. So um, when you went to Nigeria, what cause, what cause did you do there? Uh, it was the intention of doing some two-year basic science course okay. at Aswa so okay. that I could transfer okay. outside to go and do pharmacy or medicine. Okay, and how was that like for you as a young person in Nigeria? That was a new environment, a new turf, no friends around you. How was that like? In fact, uh, it was... My ambition right from the word go that I wanted to be okay. work within the medical field, either as a medical doctor okay. or a pharmacist. Okay. So that was the plan. But okay. when I went to Aswa, they told me that couldn't come on. So I had to come on, rewrite the A levels okay. and got so good. I was admitted at the US after the results. Oh, okay. So in Aswa they wanted me to read religions or theology to okay. become a pastor. All right. But as of that time, I, I never had the plan of becoming a pastor. So okay. You I didn't think you had the calling? At all. Okay. At all. I, I wasn't interested. Okay. So that was why I left after one semester. Okay. And came back, wrote my A-levels, and then fortunately for me, I got a nursing. Okay. And initially, uh, I should have gone to Lebon Medical School. I was invited for an interview. Okay, how did you miss that? How could you miss uh, that? Those days we used to have a box 480 in Kumasi okay. SDO conference mm. because we, we never had a private box. Yeah. So everybody, all the students, teachers, and what have you, church members and choirs were all using box 480. Okay. So when my letter for interview came, a church member picked it. Maybe with the intention of giving it, sending it to me, but she broke it. So it was after about a week that I had the letter, and by that time, they had completed the interview schedule. So okay. that was how I missed the chance at Lebo Medical School and interview. And you didn't try doing anything to get in, or you just gave up? No, no, I, I went to Legon, but the registrar told me once I couldn't come for the interview, that was the end, Okay. because it was a policy. Okay. If you don't attend the interview, there's no way you could be admitted. So All right. I had to accept it and okay. came back. And then, fortunately for me, I got admission to 
at USD. In USD, okay. To, to do pharmacy. Okay, okay. All right. Um, so, from right, did anything significant happen during your time in school? Um, okay. Anything worth noting? Okay, at the same school, from one to five, I was a tiny boy. Okay. But when I went to the university to, I was a, a Katanga Hall. Okay. A fellow. Oh, okay. And then you were in Katanga Hall. Yes. All right. Okay. And then I was a member of the Katanga Hall football team. Okay. And then the University of Science and Technology as a school football team. Okay. I was a member. I was a member okay. For the four years I then was at I can say you really enjoyed your time in the university. Oh, yeah. Okay. All Katanga right, so was big family. Yeah. And then you have friends. Yeah. yeah. Even to now. And it was an all boys. Y yes. Okay. Yes. So Even we, then. Okay. We enjoy. I enjoyed being there. Okay. Made friends easily. Katanga is a big family. Okay. And uh, anything you want, you get it at Katanga. Wow. Uh, once you're an athlete, you're a footballer, you're a sportsman, or you do anything for Katanga, you see that the, the whole will reward you. Okay. You're all brothers and sisters. Okay. Even we are friends till now. All right, okay. So when we meet, we call ourselves okay. Minya. Minya. I see. So that is the slogan at okay. Katanga. Did you, were you employed right after your national service? Yes. To work with the hospital? Yes. Uh, and yeah. for how long were you there for? I stayed at Fianquanta for about 10 years, from wow. 89 to 99, over okay. 10 years, and I rose to become the acting head of the pharmacy department. Oh, okay, during that period of the 10 short, years? Yes, oh, 10 okay. years. Okay. That was what I was doing at Fiong Panta. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay, so Mr. Kwame Donfe, as we can see, um, we know you work with um, with the help of crutches, and, and we, we can also tell that you have problems walking and you can't even bend your leg. Can you please tell us what landed you in this situation? Okay, it was some Wednesday evening around 7.38 p.m. Which year was that? On 90, 98, 99, I've forgotten. Okay. I had a call that I should come to Kumasi the okay. next morning. You had a call? from. Kumasi. Okay. Because I was in Takwadi, my, my parents were in Kumasi, so right. my junior father gave me that call that okay. she come to Kumasi okay. the next morning. Okay. I tried to inquire why that, but he said I should just come and then we'll discuss one or two things. Okay. Okay. But I thought it was my mom who was sick. She had diabetic, so I thought maybe some of the complications as they blow up so so you thought his inability to communicate whatever the problem was yeah. was because you told your mom's condition had worsened yeah. okay and they, they were just trying to hide that from you sure okay. so i thought it was my mom so okay the next morning around 3 4 a.m i set off from takwari go to Kumasi around 8 a.m okay go home and everybody was okay okay were your parents even surprised to see you? Yes, because oh. they, they didn't know I was coming. Oh, okay. I had just talked with my junior father. Okay. So when I went, I told them my daddy junior had called me. So okay. we went, called him, we came to the house, and then he gave us why he asked me to come down. And it was some local domestic problem. So in less than an hour, we talked, and then we... When you, when you say domestic problem, what do you mean? Uh, it was between... Is it Ibushi and Wansu? What, what was it? No, no, it, it was between myself and my wife. Oh, and okay. Then there was some problem. Okay. So okay. they asked me to come down for us to solve that problem. Okay. So when I came, I told them my peace of mind. And I was going back to Takwade that day. I had a road traffic accident and okay, so things have it was changed after everything. after you were going back to yeah. where you live yeah. that you had the accident. accident. Yeah. So did you were you were you awake on the bus when the accident happened? You know most yeah. travelers do sleep when it's a long journey. Yeah, I was I was well awake, so I saw everything. It okay. was I think it was the fault of our driver. It was two cars moving in opposite direction. Okay. We were going to Takwadi and he was also coming from Takwadi. 
he moved into our lane. And instead of our, our driver either stopping or giving him the highlights, she also decided to cross, okay. move into that guy's lane. Yeah. And then within a split second, the guy also realized he was traveling the wrong lane. So he decided to come back to his lane. Okay. So that was how the accident occurred. Okay. And then we had to go back okay. into some valley. And wow. Then, uh, okay. And were people around? No, it was out, um, around 7.38. But um, when the accident occurred, at that moment, what happened and what was going on in your mind? And what, what was the scene there? Uh, after the loud noise, there was some brief moment. Everybody was quiet. So I realized I had gotten compound fracture. Okay. So I had to take off my shirt, tie my tie with the shirt, and then my singlet, the tie this lower limb, so okay. as to arrest bleeding. Okay. And then I had to use one hand to support the broken leg. Okay. And then the other one to start walking. So you walk on one hand, and then you use the other hand to support. Wow. The broken. Wow. And leg. in all this, you are trying to get out of the vehicle. Yeah. So I use that got out of the car, then I dragged myself to a safer place. Okay. And, and then I was waiting for help to come. And it was around 7.38, around Christmas, and then... Okay. And you were the only person who, who was actually able to come out? No, the, the mo we had about four guys, commercial guys, who were selling this uh, second-hand clothing. Okay. They were in the bus. Okay. About two of them also got injured. The other two, they were trying to lift people from the car. Okay. Okay. And where was this stranger friend of yours? He too had gotten some fracture. About three. Okay. So he was also bleeding. And okay. I asked him to remove the shirt, tie, so that at least he could reduce the bleeding. Yeah. But he yeah. wasn't a medical person, so... Okay. They took him out of the car, it was sitting there, and when help came, they took us to Cape Coast Hospital. Okay. And okay. The, the nurses okay. took our history. So between the time that you guys were, the rest of, some of the guys were rescuing the rest from the bus, and you having to tie your leg to arrest the bleeding, um, did no car stop? Did nobody come? What happened? Some of the cars stopped, but the moment it, they saw people in that condition, blood, yeah. bleeding, fractures, uh, speed off. Wow. So we are fortunate we had one car, I've forgotten the nature of the car, some small car. And then they stopped him. It was empty, so they packed us into the, that car and then sent us to Cape Coast Hospital. Okay. And then uh, from there, the nurses started taking a uh, history, your name, your address, mm -hmm. where you're going, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. Then they prepared us, because the two of us, myself and that guy from Sunyane, okay. uh, we needed surgery, urgent surgery. Okay. So they prepared us for theater. Mm -hmm. And then once we were about to enter theater, we were on two uh, beds. Pulling, we're pulling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so just around the time that uh, we were just at the entrance of the main theater, at the time that we were just to put pushing in, yeah, he popped off and died. Oh, tragic. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was myself alone at that time. And when I got inside, I also realized the doctor who was called me was a doctor friend at Fiam Quanta. So. Oh, right. so um, viewers, as you can see, the story is getting much more intense and inspiring. But don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Okay, so um, you were saying you met this um, yeah. doctor friend. Yes. Uh, I, he was, was, was he, were you, were you both working at the hospital? The, bus, the hospital no, he work? came from Germany, the specialist. He came okay. to Fiam Quanta. Okay. And then uh, that was, and I was going on ward round with him. He was a surgeon. Okay. And I was going on ward okay. round. I've forgotten his name. Okay. Dr. Wood or something. So I've okay. forgotten his name. 
Okay. So that was, but uh, what actually brought us closer was uh, his junior brother's wife came with uh, uh, about a year old daughter who had pneumonia. And then the child was given some crystalline injection. But I said, that injection is very painful and for a one-year-old daughter, I thought it was too much. And at that time, they had introduced this uh, drug, amoxicillin suspension. Okay. And it was very good for pneumonia. So okay. I had some in the house. I gave it out to him freely, gave him some old vitamin. And then he asked for the price of those items, but I told him it was free. Wow. Free. So from that day, I got very close to, with him, and then we became friends before oh, okay. he left Kian for Oh, okay. 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 So he, he saved, well, he saved the limb for the first time. It was, okay. It was the first day that he did. Okay. That actually helped me maintain the leg. Okay. All right. Okay. And then uh, on the accident, uh, there was this woman. She didn't die, and I'm sure she was carrying some baby. All right. His baby. So when we had that accident that night, the woman was either was in coma, so they brought us to Kipu's hospital. And it was around, after my dad had returned from theater, around 1 a.m. that the woman regained consciousness. And then he was talking about my baby, my baby. Wow. So we thought he was just hallucinating. Or yes. And then the next day, when the police went to the accident site, they saw that baby in the wow. car. Wow. And the baby wow. was just playing. Wow. So the police brought that baby to the mother. So um, the, the, the that channel. means not even the villagers knew there was a baby on the bus. Yes. Because when they came, most of us were on the streets. Okay. So they thought they had cleared us. Okay. Nobody was there. But All the right. baby, they forgot about the baby. Wow. And the baby stayed by itself throughout the night. Throughout the night. So the wow. next morning, when the police went to the accident scene, the child was there and they wow. brought the child to the mother. Wow. wow. So it was wow. very, very... That's, that's, that's even one sign of a miracle. Sure. All right, so um, in total, three people died. Yeah. And um, you were 20 in number. Yeah, so that means that 17, 17 of you were injured. Yeah. All right, so how was it like getting in a hospital and then all of a sudden, like about 17 people, and this is Ghana? No, about uh, out of the rest 17, I and then another guy had the most serious condition. The rest okay. were... We were just walking around. Okay. We had some diseases. Minor diseases. Yes. Okay. And then they were treated and then okay. discharged. Yes. But myself and the other the guy. The stranger friend. Yes. We had to, we had a serious okay. fracture, so they had to detain us okay. on the ward. Right. I stayed in Cape Coast Hospital, the ward, for some time. Okay. And then it was necessary that I, I was transferred to St. Joseph Ophelia, because that was where all the specialists pointed to. And we started working for a bit. And it was marvelous. And how I got a bed in the St. Joseph, is, that is another story. Hmm, do tell. Yeah. When I was at Fian Quanta, I went to one, one round time. When I came back one day, I saw some young boy about 12, between 12 and 14 year old. He was in his school uniform, crying in front of my office. And I asked the child and said he's been bitten by a dog, a stray dog. And then he came and he's been asked to go and buy antibiotics plus other antibiotics. The boy but, was able to relay all that information Yes, to but he said uh, they gave him some prescription to go and buy some drugs. Mm. But the mother cannot afford, so the mother has asked the boy to wait for him okay. while she goes to uh, this uh, bishop's son. <coughs> He's a the woman was a Catholic. Okay, okay, so she was going to see her. Uh, okay. The bishop. So I said, uh, whether he's eating, said no. So I managed to get him some food. 
Okay. And, uh, and you I just, still had not met the mom? No, no, even no. Even at that time? Okay. So I picked the child, went to my office, picked the antibiotics injection. It was in the pack. Took the child to the treatment room, injection room, for the child to be treated, and I gave him all the strat free. So when wow. we came from the injection room, the mother had come with a paper. And then the, the paper read that he, Bishop Sam, and he had said we should treat the child and then write the total cost, give it back to the woman so that he goes back to him. Bishop Sam will give him her the money and then come back and pay. So when I read it, I also turned the paper and I wrote, uh, I've declared the child a pauper, so everything is free. Then wow. I signed my name, Kwame Donfe, and I stamped it. So I gave the paper back to the woman to be given to Bishop Sam. I see. So she took it there. So when the need came for me to be transferred to Kofuria St. Jesus, it wasn't easy getting the bed those wow. times. So one of my medical soup, Dr. Okan, Okay. Yeah, all kind of one. He was a Catholic. So he went to see Bishop Sam to see how best he could help. Said one pharmacist from Ephia Panta need to be transferred to St. Joseph. Then said it was Kwame Donfe. So the bishop said, ah, the name rings a bell. So Sounds he went familiar. to his office, checked on file, and then came back. And he told the uh, open that yeah, that pharmacist, I know him. So from there, realizing that it was And this me, was results, this, this was a result of um, the, the act boy, of kindness you... The, the act of kindness that I did to that school boy. So Bishop Sam picked the phone, called his counterpart at Kofobia, Eastern Region. And then they worked it out. And immediately, I had a bed. So wow. I was, the next day, I was transferred from Kipus Hospital to St. Joseph. Okay. And that was where... I had a best of treatment. Wow. I had to do wow. a put on the leg and then Wow. So wow. it was I think it's the act of kindness that I did to yeah. some people some years it's back that mm. in a way God paid it back yeah. to me yeah. in that order. Yeah. Okay. All right. So viewers don't forget that as you watch this video you continue to share it across all social media platforms and do not also forget to subscribe to our channel. Mr. Kwame Donfe, your story is really, really an interesting one. Yeah. Can you tell us um, how the situation was like in the family when they first heard of your um, unfortunate... It wasn't easy. Predicament? It wasn't easy, especially with my mom. Okay. I was very close to my mom. It wasn't, she couldn't take it, but I called her. She came to the ward. And I, and I talked with okay. her that everything will be okay, so she take heart. And then that time I had gotten a, my second born, she was a girl, and I've named her after my mom. Okay. So my mom picked the child from there to Kumasi. Okay. And then I went to Kofobia with my wife and then my junior brother. Okay. How many kids did you have then? Well, three. Oh, okay. Two boys and a girl. Okay. And then, it was once on admission that uh, one Thursday, to the Thursday, yes, all the bad things So, um, before that, how long were you in the hospital for? I spent about uh, 10 or so days at Cape Coast. Okay. No, when, when the accident happened, Myself and my wife were in Takra, the Fiam Okay, Panta. okay. So because I was transferred to St. Joseph, my wife yeah. had to accompany me. Yes, yes. So okay. the small girl yes. decided to give it to my mom yeah. for caring. Okay. Yeah, that was our household. Okay. That was okay. how. So okay. my mom was caring for her grand, uh, granddaughter, and then I was on okay. uh, Kofobia with my wife and then my sister here. Okay. With, before you, you had to, the patient had to provide his own food. Okay. So my sister was in the house. He would okay. prepare the food, bring it to us on the ward. Mm. And then myself and my sister will, my wife will eat. She would go home, prepare herself, whilst my sister would be there caring okay. for so me. So they were kind of like running shifts. Yes, right. yes. And then 
it was whilst doing that she decided to come and see the daughter mm. in Kumasi. So okay. when she came, and then I don't know what happened. Wow. They came back to say that it, my wow. daughter had popped off. Wow. It was, it was a, no easy. Because nobody to come and tell me. So it took my father himself to come to Kofodia to tell me that story and then. That's tragic. He had to go so I mean we had to sit down. Well, it wasn't easy. It was not easy already. It wasn't easy at that time. But mm. uh, we we talked and then everything was a bit okay. So because once it had happened there's nothing you could do. Wow. So, that I was lost. really a big blow. Yeah, I lost uh, my daughter then then my condolences. Oh, thank you. Okay, okay so Mr. Dumfe, um, at the time that you were going through all these um, situations, how would you say you still had that same faith in God? Yeah. You were uh, Christian? Yeah. I knew at the appropriate time things would be okay, but uh, I had a very tough mind that I uh, I'll be okay. But as to when, I didn't know. Okay. So I kept my face, hoping that things would turn around my favor. Okay. So that was, I was just hoping against hope. And did, uh, did things actually turn around for you? Uh, no. It didn't turn the way that I expected. Mm -hmm. Around that time, there was a problem between myself and my wife, and then and then at that time you were still in the hospital yeah, or you was, had been discharged? No, 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 I was on admission. Okay. So uh, that was all then in my wife leaving the place and then she came and after that we were never together again. So you were you were still on your hospital bed when your wife um, declared that? She, she came she and that I can't pinpoint the actual cause of it, but she came down and then from there, before I realized no, everything was off, okay. but then we couldn't come the back again. The divorce had happened, yeah. okay, so okay. With or without your consent, the divorce had happened? Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. So we, we had to move on. Okay, I, 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 I can only imagine that life became even more difficult for you. Imagine being in this situation and then all of a sudden using your only daughter, and then at that same moment, your wife also deciding that that was the time mm. to just go. I can't even imagine how difficult that was for you. It was, it was a terrible time, but uh, I was discharged, came back, and then the troubles also started. People started talking about, she didn't listen to his parents, and then mm. he married, and that sort of. So yeah. it was. It was not easy, but not easy. I kept my cool. Yeah. Said, okay. okay. Whatever happens, I mean, okay. I will sail through. Okay. It was very diff difficult time for me, okay. but okay. I maintained my steadfastness in the okay. Lord, and then right. it started developing that okay. tough mind okay. that whatever happens, okay. I will sail through. I mean. All right. So, um, after that period, you were discharged home. And then you resumed work right away? Or? No, I had to stay out for about a year before I could. What do you mean you had to stay out for about a year? From the after discharge, I couldn't yeah. work immediately because okay. I couldn't walk. Okay. We had okay. pins mm. just stuck in the leg because okay. we had not removed the pins. Yeah. So I was just in the house. I was asked to stay there for another three months. Okay. Yeah. Because if I had stayed in Kofobi, I would be paying a hospital bill mm. without any treatment. So okay. it was better my coming home, yeah. staying there, and then after the three months, okay. get back to. So right. uh, after the third month, I got back to Kofobi, and they removed the pins that were stuck in the legs. Mm. So yeah. how did you cope? I mean, you left home whole, and then you came back not whole. How did you cope? Coming home and then, uh, I'm sure you're using a wheelchair then. I was using the crutches. Oh, you were still using crutches. Yes. Okay. So how did you cope? Coming home and then adjusting to a very different life. Yeah. How did you cope? Uh, 
my movements were limited, so I had to stay in the house throughout. Very little movement. Stay right will be I was up inside the room, come out, sit, and then maybe some of our friends will come, mm. chat. That was all that I was doing. Okay. Because you couldn't move out okay. with the clutches. Okay. And then I was asked not to step on the leg yeah. so much. So yeah. I had to hold on, walk some few distance, and then you sit down. Okay. Uh, so okay. the time that the leg was completely healed, okay. that the bones are completely healed mm. when I, I took the x-ray. Okay. So after that one year, you went back to work? Yes. I was okay. transferred from a young Kwanita to Suntreso okay. Hospital. Okay. And it was then I realized that I have gotten a hip dislocation. Okay. So I went back to Kofuridia to see the doctor if they could correct it. What caused the hip dislocation? It was uh, after, during the accident. Yeah. I had a fracture down here. Mm. And then the upper part, the, there was a dislocation, the femur, the, the bone hit it's facing into a socket yeah, like this. Yeah. But it was just after the accident, I don't know, it got out and then up. Okay. So, and initially I wasn't turning. I was just sitting and sleeping that way. So it was after my 11 months or so, when they had removed the pins that I was able to turn. So when the side of the hip touched the bed, I. I experienced some sharp pain. Mm. So I went to Sintreso for an X-ray, mm. took it to St. Joseph Kofobia. Wow. That was when I and saw And the doctors pain. didn't detect that at that time? You had to come home and then realize right. that? At that time, all the attention was on the fractured okay. leg. Okay. Making sure the bones were okay. lined up, everything. Okay. And because that, I, I didn't feel any pain at the hip. Okay. I didn't complain. Okay. So if I'd complained, if I'd realized the pains okay. and I'm told him maybe they would have done everything mm -hmm. at a go. Okay. So um that means you realized um you had a problem at your back, you had to come and stay home again. How was your finances like? Who was taking care of you? Myself. That's what how did you manage to take care of yourself? Uh, I would say at same for the dry season when it rains you just work it out put some at the bank and then you store it so that because okay. i had to foot everything myself mm. and then at, at times my parents will also assist okay but just myself and myself alone. mostly you yeah. okay okay because right. in minister of there wasn't any policy for okay. anything I mean, okay so even at the time you were a full-time employee yes yes they didn't have any form of support you, for? I paid it, my bill at Kofurudia, and then when I came back at the uh, Mina, I had to pay okay. it. So I had okay. to support myself. Okay. Yeah. So, um, did you finally go back to work? After a Mina, no. I resigned. Okay. <laughs> I resigned after I got in treatment at Emina, and then started it. Join people in private pharmacy practice. Okay. That okay. is what I've been doing ever since. All right. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Dumfe, um, in all these times that um, you were home, um, you weren't always indoors, right? So, how um, was your movement like? Uh, it was a bit difficult. So, I decided to buy a car. At that time, I had two boys to use in sending them to school. Okay. And then the area that I was staying at Quadra, so I had a friend there, and he brought some BMW that Somalaji was selling. We checked the papers, it was seemingly okay, everything, so I paid for it. And normally, those times, I will, when I get bored in the house, I'll just get into the car, and then the driver will take me to British Council. Oh, you had a like, driver? Yes, okay. British Council to just go and sit there and read because that time when I'm bored in the house, that was where I used to while away with my time. Okay. So I was there when my junior brother came to tell me that a customs has impounded the car 
asking us to bring the original papers. So your neighbor knowingly um, sold a stolen car? Um, yes. Okay. So they arrested them, sent them to Accra Customs. Right? Mm -hmm. It was a Thursday, so the next day I joined them. Then after everything, they are, they are convinced, the two guys were convinced that they accepted that they, yeah, they had to. The, what the custom guys were saying was the truth. So it was two options. Either they pay the duty plus the penalty, that was mm -hmm. about 20 million or 2,000 Ghana cities, or they refund my money to me. Okay. So they, they decided to take the letter because it was cheaper because they couldn't afford the 20 million. Mm -hmm. And they said they were detaining them in Accra so they paid the money. And uh, I even had to plead for them that uh, okay, once they have accepted it, they should allow them us to get to Kumasi. Because I'm sure when we get yeah. to Kumasi, they will pay. Because they are not from Accra. And it was a Friday. If we should leave them, nobody is here to feed them. So yeah. I just pleaded with the custom officials that uh, I'm staying with them in Kumasi. I know them is a friend. So they accepted my plea and then I brought them back to Kumasi. Okay. And ever since, nobody paid anything. Even back. till date? Yes. Wow. So uh, wow. I just decided to forget wow. it because I realized life is more precious than. And so uh, some of these things, you have to overlook some of these light events mm -hmm. and then press on. Okay. Uh, okay. So that, that, that was a. Uh, the car because I was almost every day I had to find a taxi to send it, my Your boys to school. To school. Yeah. Okay, wow, wow. I can't imagine how challenging that must have been for you. Yeah. Okay, um, so Mr. Dunfer, can you tell us specifically some of the very challenging things that you went through? Okay, the first was the accident. Okay, second the loss of my daughter and okay. then the the divorce in quotes. okay okay around the same time yes all because, these things happened the yes, same time yes happened around the same time when i was a patient i had not fully recovered from the yeah. the shock of the accident so one can say you were almost helpless yes okay and then the the death of my mom okay so wasn't it Or can in the fourth will be customization of my car. Okay. Yeah. I, so um, let me say you depended solely on the car to yeah, was, help carry you and your kids around. Because yes. after the accident, after paying all the bills, it was the little man that was left that I used in buying the car, and okay. I realized to all make that life I should, a little comfortable, comfort, comfortable for myself and oh the my kids, God. and then it all went okay. away. So. I said, uh, Some people can actually be very heartless. That's how <coughs> Ghana for you. So the accident was about the four main things that pricked me. Okay. Severe. Okay. And if um, you had the opportunity to change something, to change something, just one opportunity, what do you think that would be? Uh, I think it will be one the way we go about taking decisions. Okay. Can you be specific? What what exactly do you mean by that? First, first and foremost, you may be where it is where and where you decide to work. How you decide to work. The people you decide to associate yourself with, and then the how you develop yourself like you develop the mindset yeah, what you mentality. believe in yes okay. what you believe in yeah. yes once you're a christian you have to accept the christian principles then you hope your hope in life and then i made a point that now whatever comes in life you grab it with your two hands mm. you catch it and then you Use what you've got to create your own destiny. Okay. Okay. You shouldn't allow any other person apart from yourself to create 
your life for you. Okay. So giving an opportunity to change something, this is what you would change. Yeah. You wouldn't change the fact that um, you would not take that phone call or you would not come to Kumasi on that fateful evening. Uh, if I had known, naturally I wouldn't have. Yeah. 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 I've come down, but yeah. some of these things uh, you wouldn't know it. You get to know only when after. It has uh, happened. It has happened. Okay. So. Okay. But I, I believe that whatever happens in life, once you are a Christian, you believe that God allowed it. Okay. And God does that for a purpose. Okay. So um, you pray to God um, for Him to tell you why He allowed such a thing to happen to okay. you. Okay. The lessons you've learned. Sure. He wants you to learn. Yes. Okay. Um. So um. During all these times, um. How would you say um, the support of the church, the family, and friends and loved ones have been? So, uh, the church is made up of individuals. Yeah. Uh, individual friends came to visit me whilst on the ward. But not the mm. church? The church put me on their prayer list that okay. time. And they were so, you can say me. they were there for you spiritually? Yes. But not financially or physically? Or oh, uh, the church, my friends in the church. Church, okay. okay. You call them, and most of my friends are outside. Just, at times, you, you wouldn't need the financial assistance. You just yeah. need somebody to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. And would you say they've been very supportive? Yes. Most of, most of my friends, almost okay. all of my friends, they'll okay. just call to chat. Wow. And that is more... Refreshing. Refreshing than maybe sending you some money. Well, at yeah. times... The man will be there, not have anybody to talk to, wow. and they will be alone wow. in the house. Yeah, that is, it's small, it's small killing. Okay. Um. So, um, given the opportunity, um, who would you say has played a very, um, which group of people or which people would you say have been very supportive and very good to you during those trying times? In fact, uh, almost all my. My schoolmates from the choir, my classmates, my course mates, pharmacy, the year group, 88 year group, and then fellow Katangis. I mean, okay. they, they've been very, 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 very helpful. Okay. Times they were called to find out how Kwama how are you feeling. But I think I have to specially mention one man. He's now. Doctor De Kwesia De Donko. Okay. He was my hospital administrator. I came when I came to Kumasi. He was the chief uh, hospital administrator in Kumasi. Okay. I think uh, I have to maintain him for the special things that he did for me okay. during those hard times. Okay. So Dada, we call him Dada. Dada, Doctor Kwesi De Donko, the hospital administrator. I think now he's a lecturer at uh, Ghana Telecom University. Okay. Yeah. He I can single him out as okay. he did a lot for me during those hard times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, lovely viewers, we are about wrapping up, but do not forget to subscribe to this channel so that you'll be one of the first to get our videos. Mr. Kwame Dongfei, would you um, would you say you would want um, the custom officers to return your card to you, even then or now, um, due to your condition? Do you not think that probably they could have maybe had mercy or shown a little leniency, looking at the situation you were in? Honestly, if they had done that, I would have enjoyed it. But gonna be life yes. Uh, it could have made my movement very easier. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ghana being what it is, you have to, they will tell you that, that is not what the law says. So yeah. I have to bear it. You, you wouldn't get what you want comfortably. I mean, going to work, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not easy, but okay. you manage and then okay. you're forced to get things okay. done. Okay. Because if, if you're going to work, you have to. Chat the taxi, mm. fine, because that is for your own comfort. Yeah. Because you cannot join the yeah. big bus. Okay. So you have to okay. take taxis. So, um, a day in your life, how is it like? You wake up every day, and then you get ready for work. How is it like getting to the workplace? 
uh, if I want to move out, I just I have to, a lot of taxi driver friends. Okay. So I just call. So you just you have their numbers ready yes, for whenever so you need them. Yes. So I call the ones that are ready. They come over and then okay. I get in and then okay. take them to wherever I want to go and then okay. he brings me back. Okay. Okay. So where do you work currently? Uh, the pharmacy shop at uh, Achima. Achima. Okay. Achima. Achima. Okay. Some small pharmacy shop okay. and then it's okay. But I enjoy working there because okay. uh, when you are there, you don't think about some of these things. Okay. You work and then you have your free mind. You come yeah. home and then. Okay. Okay. Because I don't want to be idle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. When okay. you are working, that, that, that's how it works. It's okay. better for me. Okay. Okay, viewers, this has been an interesting episode and we are grateful to you for your time. We continue to urge you to share our videos on all social media platforms. Do not also forget to subscribe to this channel so as to be notified whenever we upload any video. See you some other time. Thank you. Bye.